beer. <sighs> yeah, hey. that's about right. That's yeah, it. Anyway, what the fuck are you talking about? Happy Halloween! Scoot doo, blabbery blue, scoot dee. Oh yeah! All right, you want a coffee? And yes. uh, oh, a uh, happy, uh, happy Halloween! Happy Halloween! I uh, I I thought this was gonna be a Halloween episode. Yeah, and, and uh, that's why I dressed up, Carl, man. I, it's the first time I've uh, donned this since the end of the workaholics. You know, I, I pulled it out of storage for you. Got the freaking shoes all the way down to the shoes, dude. Could you take those off? Hey, Betty. <laughs> Fuck off. Hi. Um, you're at Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me over the Alicia Keys music or no? Um, yes. Can but we might have to bleep it out for uh, YouTube rights. Okay. Uh, Kyle, tell me what you're not gonna be able to call Kyle, so I'm gonna ask him what he wants, and I'll repeat it to you, okay? Okay. But he could hear you, so don't say uh, anything. Workaholics about is uh, still on the air. Is still on the air. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. Kyle, what do you want? Uh, if I could get an first the beverage. First the beverage. Give me a upside down caramel macchiato he, iced. He wants an upside down caramel macchiato iced. Might as well I make it a big dog. Now. Might as well make it a big dog. Yeah, I am now. Would you say uh, to the window first, will you say happy Halloween to her? Just it's in a man. Oh, never mind. Ne yeah, yeah you can't. Not anymore. Not in today's climate. No. Okay, then just ask him for an upside down caramel macchiato iced, a big boy or girl. Hi. Hi. Can I get an upside down caramel macchiato big boy? Did you make that drink up? She said big boy. <laughs> Um, and then can I get a chai latte grande iced with almond milk with a shot of espresso? Could you also ask for an upside down orange fata? I already messed that Don't up. Do that. Okay. Don't do that. Don't do that. What food? Hold on one minute. What food? What do you want to eat? Do the, I Sorry. would like the, the egg white spinach wrap. Egg white wrap. spinach wrap. Can, do you have an egg white spinach wrap? Also, if they He's going to check because I didn't see, see any. If they don't, do they can have... Can I get one of those? Do they have the Beyond sausage? Do you ha do you do they have the Beyond sausage? Do you have the Beyond sausage? She's really sweet the way she's like, I feel the way like the I'm up in an, an Ellen skit where I'm like, hello. You kind of are. <laughs> get the uh, Beyond yeah. get the Beyond sausage upside down as well. No, no, don't. Do you want both? Her. The Beyond sausage. Do you want both? Do they have them both? Yeah. Uh, I want both. Yeah, both. Yeah, fuck yeah, but Sorry, I don't want it upside I don't know down. What I'm doing. Uh, but then we'll turn it, we'll flip it back when we get here. God damn it. That's all. It's rough, man. T -T -B -T -T -Y. All right, bye bye. All right, bye. I love you. Thank you. I love bye, you. Thanks. Sorry. Oh, wait, babe, can we do that okay. thing where I'm embarrassed to say I love you, but you try to get me to say it? Okay. All right, all right. Thanks, thanks. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, I love you. Bye. All right, yep. Yeah. Me, thank you. Straws. Everyone wants straws. Okay, bye. All right, bye. <laughs> she, she, <laughs> she didn't, didn't care. She didn't, she didn't do a good job she with that. She didn't care. Hey, um, why are you not wearing a costume? It's Halloween. What's going on? Yeah, I made the mis I made a mistake that I thought this was a Halloween episode. What do you mean? Because it's October, and I thought you would be the Halloween episode, but I have a couple people canceled, and I uh, have to put this out sooner than Halloween. Wait, what? So you, you when did you figure that out? Uh, I as you were like coming here. Somebody canceled. As I was. Walking up and you were filming me dressed After, as when, when Carl, you, you knew When that. you told me that you were here, that's right around when I found out, but you were already dressed as Carl, so... So what? You said it was like a special Halloween episode, and I don't normally get into Halloween, so I was like, well, this will be tight. But now you're not even you dressed... You mean it'll be tight butthole? Yeah, it'll be fucking tight butthole, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, if it's not Halloween, I'm not going to wear this fucking dog shit. Man, you've been here before. You know the magic of the pod. Eat my dick, bitch. There we go. A little better. <laughs> so you just came from a photo shoot for... I, I uh, did. This is important podcast on iHeartRadio. That's you could, right. You could listen to where all places... Well, no, you can't. I guess you could only listen on iHeartRadio. No, no. You can listen to it on iHeartRadio, which is, I think, what they prefer. But then you can also listen to it on anywhere you get your podcasts. Aren't... You're hot. You got to be hotter now. 
I, it's it's these are very heavy. These are very heavy. Yes, Go very for heavy. It. Uh, I guess I'll just change out of them real quick or find something else. Okay. Incidentally, I got the AC blasting, so give me one sec. Wow, a jacket, huh? <laughs> With a blanket? Yeah, I have to have the AC. It's so hot out, I have the AC blasting. Jesus, it must be nice in there, huh? It's really, really nice in here. All right, well, you know what? I'm feeling a little bit vulnerable because I have a feeling you're just going to stare at my nipples the whole time. Look at that. So I'm a. Uh, oh, my God, so much better. Yeah, I'm so hot. Great. Woo! All we need now is a couple of coffees. Hell yeah. Put your hand out. Snap. No, no. Yeah, that hand. Otherwise, you'll spill it. Put, just put your hand out. Snap. Woo! <laughs> what did you want me to do? <laughs> what the fuck? I want you to snap again. Oh. So, like... <laughs> <laughs> you got to snap first. Okay, so I snap and I actually go to take a sip. <laughs> no, no, just, dude, just, just snap. Freeze, freeze, freeze. <laughs> this is movie magic, baby. Oh, right. The straw. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Woo. For those of you watching at home, uh, we started this three days ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so true. We could do a podcast of just the behind the snaps. Behind the snaps. That's what BTS, we do behind the snaps. Baby, that's Which cool. if you want to see all the behind the snaps, make sure you go to patreon.com slash take your shoes off. Hell yeah. Get onto that Patreon. Be a patron. Um... Oh, I don't have my shoes on. Dude, I did that right. <laughs> okay. That, was, that almost spilled. I like that little baby snap <laughs> yeah, that you had there. That was cute. I'll put in different snap audio. <laughs> that was cute, DSA. though. DSA. Yeah, DSA. What's that? Different snap audio? Yeah. Word. I like that. Um, Kyle, I'm having so much fun with you, but I also want to make sure we don't spend too much time not actually talking. Yeah, well, that's okay with me if we never talk, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Ever again after this. It's fine. It's all good. Like, you know, we don't need to discuss anything, really. Uh, Betty, thank you. Uh, oh, um, do you want your sandwiches now? I would love my sandwich. Can I... Uh, want to do the old-fashioned way, or you want to snap them in? Yeah, bring them on in. Why don't in. we show Just people a little of behind the scenes? Bring them on in. Is that what you mean? Yeah, but I want to show... We're not going to edit this out. Let me show... Right. Let's show okay. it. Really Just snap and freeze. Here we go. All right, everybody. This is what it really looks like. I make my guests sit outside and freeze, and I putz around for a little bit. Again, make sure to go to patreon.com slash take your shoes off to see all of these behind the scenes. Thank you. So come here. Oh my god, that is so cute. I love it. Rick's in love. I've never seen him like this. I'm still frozen though. Now we're gonna put this in there. I think that one's mine too, player. <laughs> so you're gonna have to do the DSAs over here too, the different snap audio. Alright, now hold on, hold on. <laughs> I don't know I can snap. <laughs> now you're gonna have to do a mini snap in 20, 19, 18, <laughs> 17. Come on everyone. 15, 4, and then you get it. Two, one. Okay. Hey, yeah. two? <laughs> Whoa, dude, what's this one? Did you notice I gave you one of them upside down? Uh, yeah, no, I did not. That's awesome though. Oh yeah, the upside down right here, baby. I ordered it upside down. God damn, you're a genius. Look at this. True fat ass ordering a couple of Starbucks, you know what I mean? But you know what? I'm hungry and I forgot my wallet today, so I'm, I'm loading up. I got to my destination. I'm like, oh shit, I don't have my wallet. I said, hey, can I borrow a couple 20s from my manager? And he's like, I don't have any cash. So then I said, hey, Rick, you got a grub hub? <laughs> Why a couple 20s? Why not just a 40? You can't. There's no $40 bill. And Rick. that's the problem. That is the problem. Why don't we have a $40 bill? Why do we have a penny? I would think a $40 bill is more useful than a penny. Talk on that. I don't agree. Listen, I got to tell you something about Bro. chewing on camera. What's up? Brad I, Pitt? I, well, that's not chew acting. He does eat acting. There's a difference. What am I doing? You're doing, you're chew acting. Uh, I just swallowed. You're not allowed to say that anymore. <laughs> you're so, right. It's a money so, joke. So I wanna money shot. I want to speak for <laughs> first base. I want to speak for the audience right now, and then you'll do with this what you will. Uh, eating is almost always funny, period. However, chewing could be annoying or, you know, disrespectful at a certain point. Yeah. So I just want to acknowledge to the audience with you, 
Kyle try to get a couple of 20s. He couldn't do it. He's going to eat real quick. I'll put a red bar from here until where the eating stops. So okay. if people want to skip on the YouTube version or okay. while you're chewing, maybe chew away from the mic. I think I would leave that in the hands of the audience. What do you guys think? Yeah. Tell us in the comments below. <laughs> right? Is that how you so you're on YouTube, so you gotta interact yeah. like that. Alright guys, if you think that Kyle's chewing is too much, comment uh Kyle's got a little dick. Whoa. If, well, hold on. If you think Kyle's chewing is fine, comment Kyle has a little penis. Okay, dick <laughs> versus pee pee. DV's pee pee. Come on, baby. Come on, Ricky. How you doing, dude? Good. I know that's your job to ask me that, but like no. I felt like asking you because I haven't seen you in uh, maybe a year, maybe a year and a half. Yeah. Maybe two years. Yeah. Well, I think when you say maybe a year, we cover even two years. Yeah, right. Because maybe a year, maybe two. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, you're in podcast mode. You're a podcaster now. I am. I'm this a podcast is important. dude. This is important on iHeartRadio. That's right. Or anywhere else you get your regular podcasts. Absolutely. Kyle, Kyle I'm good. Thanks for asking. Awesome, man. Yeah. Podcasting but, is no joke. How many have you done so far? We've done like eight, nine, ten, something like that. And are they out yet? Mm -mm. And they're going to come out one a week, right? They come out on October 13th. So if obviously you're not airing this on October 31st, so maybe. I think this will air. Uh, what do you guys think? When do you think this will air? Leave some comments <laughs> below. Do you think it'll air the 13th or the day before the 12th? Yeah, this will come out a day before your podcast. So it airs tomorrow. It, it comes airs, out tomorrow. It comes out tomorrow. Or yeah. if you're listening to this Tuesday or after. Right. It's, it just came out today or after or, or two the, years. A couple days before or maybe a year. But at least tomorrow. At the longest you'll have to wait is tomorrow. And uh, Correct. It's, it's you, it's Anders, it's Blake, it's Adam, it's the four guys. That's right. Oh, excuse me. I forgot you guys are called in the town. And correct me if I'm wrong. Adam told me what? you guys are referred to as the boys. The boys. The boys of Hollywood. Right. That's right. That's who we are. That's what we like. Uh, we prefer to be named uh, by... We prefer that name. Sure. The boys of Hollywood, we're back. And how are you feeling about podcasting? Are you feeling like it's work? Or are you feeling it's fun to have an excuse to be with the boys or both? Well, our podcast is no guests. It's right. just us. So it's like fantastic. Is there preparation? No. So no. you talk about what you've done for the week? No. We talk about just like whatever we want to talk about. It, it really is. There's no real format to it. We're kind of blowing up the whole, you got to have a format. You got to have this. The only Are thing you that, blowing it up. Huh? You're blowing it. There's uh, every podcast before had a big format as I mean, I listened to like one or two. So <laughs> <laughs> what's my format? Your format is take your shoes off. That's, That's your whole thing. <laughs> yeah, that was a format. It's just a rule. Well, you also have guests. You also have like snaps. That's the big you difference. have goblins. You have these gimmicks. We don't have any of those real gimmicks. We're it's Yes, it is weird being so sincere with you right now, and I love it, and that's why I think your podcast is doing well, my man. <laughs> <laughs> we're just, it's just us bullshitting. Like, we, we thought about it while we were on the phone together, and we all were always supposed to talk about pitches and stuff, and we just ended up talking about shit that is not important. So we thought it'd be great to have a podcast called This Is Important. Does somebody take the lead? Have you noticed on certain episodes, is it evenly distributed? Is, is, does somebody come in hot? Or it's like, hey, you take over for a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we all kind of come in with um, a take. That's why it's gross. <laughs> That's added to the list. But blur that. For that the people was who are just listening, some upside down egg just came out of his Whoa, mouth. Whoa, blur that one. That's gross. You know what I think I'll do? Why don't we just talk about stuff that's unimportant now, and I'm going to put this in crazy fast forward until you're done eating. All right. All right, man. Last bite. Mm. Hey! Oh, oh, oh! You know, I think we do need a gimmick. It plays, Kyle. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. I mean, coming at it without a gimmick is kind of like, who the fuck are you? You know what I mean? I guess that's kind of what I realized. Like, who do we think we are? The boys of Hollywood or something? <laughs> yeah, well, you guys are good. <laughs> so, Kyle, uh, now I think now we're settled in. I think... I think uh, we've done we've done some outfit changes. We've done some goblins. Settling in. Move the fan to where you need it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're done eating. So welcome back to the balcony, man. Dude, it's awesome to be here. Thanks for having me, Rick. Uh, happy to be on the balcony during this uh, COVID time. Yeah. You know? the uh, A lot has happened since you last came on Tyso. Um, Dude, for real. Some uh, Now, actually, I want to talk about... Um, 
the Emmys, but there's something that I've been wondering for years. Is it an Emmy nod or an Emmy nom? From my understanding, the when you when you're going for an Emmy, you get the nom. And then when you're going for the Oscar, you get the nod. So an Emmy is nom, short for nomination, or right. short for nom, 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 the way the goblin just ate that, that right. upside-down egg. Uh huh. But uh, for the Oscars, there's nothing casual about it. You don't get a nom. You're nominated. But well, hold on, classically, hold on. they nod at the tip of the hat. Well, the thing is, is like the nomination is the nomination. That's cool. But the Emmys are so, like, not weighty. You know, the when you go for an Oscar and you get a nomination for an Oscar and say you win the Oscar, the prize is not the Oscar itself. The prize for, say, best actor is when they're up there and they'd say, I'd like to thank my director, Darren Aronofsky. And Aronofsky goes like... That, ah. So that's actually the nod. So an Emmy nod isn't... For the person winning the Emmy, rather the opportunity to be nodded to from an Aronofsky, a, a Newichek. Yeah. Yep. When I get in the Oscars, I hope to give someone the nod after they get the, the nom a nation for the Oscar, and the nom is like kind of a loosely paralleled version of the nod, but. It's more just a nomination. It's television. Television is weak sauce compared to film. Dude, that's that's old thinking. Where we are in the shadows. That's old thinking? Yeah. Television is the new movies, and movies is the new black. Oh. Hmm. I mean that, uh, uh, like, like, uh, uh. Like black television matters? <laughs> like, uh, Cut that out. <laughs> no, I was doing, like, orange is the new black. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> no, I'll believe everything else but it, dude. Um, the, uh. Uh, what happens if you win an Oscar, excuse me, an Emmy for Best Director, Yeah. and you get a nod from somebody in the audience who is one of your actors or producers or writers? I don't think that's a nod, necessarily. That's a literal nod. I'm getting a nod, but it's not the nod. Literal nod because they're the writer. Oh, a literal nod, just it's like a nod, like you're nodding at someone, but it's not the nod that you're looking for because it's not an Oscar. Dude. The last, the last three minutes has been trucks pouring by as we're distinguishing the difference between a not. You want inside Hollywood info, information. Um, yeah, but tell me about, tell me about uh, sp speaking of Halloween, tell me about what it's like directing vampire comedies. Oh, dude, Shadows is my new favorite project that I could have ever been a it's part awesome. of. It's awesome. Yeah, I, thank you. I really love it. Last season, I went out there to, uh, season two, I went out there to guest direct one. And then because uh, the way th because Jermaine was over on Avatar two and three, like he couldn't come in and direct, so they Jermaine I, is who normally directs them. Jermaine directs a bunch of them. Yeah, Jermaine whom? I'm sorry, I don't know. Jermaine Clement, the guy who he's he's yes. he's who created it with I Taika. Know, I know Clement. I, I didn't know his full name. Yeah, yeah, he he created it with Taika, uh -huh. and then they made the television show. Taika direct a f directed a few of them. Season one, Jermaine also. So then season two, Jermaine was going to come out. Taika's busy with Marvel, and then they asked me to come out. What's your relationship with them? How does that offer come to you? Uh, it came to me through my agency, really. Like, I mean, it was I was like, I just really want to work. I need to get out there and do something funny. Uh, I was getting stir crazy a little little bit, and they were looking for someone to come do the television show or come guest direct like one or two episodes. And my agent brought it to me, and I was like, yes, I love that movie. I hadn't seen the show yet, but the movie I watched like religiously. I, I thought it was so fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, if the show is anything like the movie, count me in. And then I looked at it. Pun intended. <clears throat> you count. Oh, 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 like that. You yeah. know, like Count Dracula. Yeah, yeah. Good. Fuck yeah, bro. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll certainly find them. Yeah, you got to get your rugs, of course, man. I, I respect that. That's a good store. <laughs> <laughs> that, to, that, that put you over the edge? That got you tired? <laughs> <laughs> Literally the fastest thing that we've done. Oh, that's a good store. That's great. Fantastic. Oh. Anyways, so uh, <laughs> so I go out there and, and Jermaine it keeps you getting... In Canada? I'm in Canada. I'm in Toronto. And they just keep asking me if I want to do one more and if I want to direct another one. And then... Now, do they, do, they, <clears throat> do, do they see what you did and are happy with it yet? 
and they ask you to, or is it just like, hey, we already have him here. It was a weird Let's do gig, a few man. More. That one was a weird gig because I, I essentially I directed half of the season of season two. I did five of ten episodes, and I didn't have a chance to experience post at all. I didn't have a chance to experience. I was just kind of running and just feeling it out. But why did you have a chance to experience it in a normal in a normal situation? How would you have a chance to experience it during that timeline? Well, I guess I, but I would only have done like one or two episodes. It wasn't like I'm responsible for half of the season without really knowing what the entire workflow was. Cause that, that show is kind of tough. There's a lot of VFX. There's a lot of like, so you're saying you literally were one week at a time. And so you didn't plan anything out for after. No, I had nothing going on. And I was just kind of like, look, I'll, I'll, I'll sink my teeth into this project. Pun intended. Pun recognized, not intended. But I will sink my teeth in this one, and then it just kind of happening. And I was like, look. Then they the pay was like, uh, I've done a whole bunch of TV before. I need to. You yeah, know. The, would you say the agents were kind of kind of sucking your blood on this one, trying to squeeze <laughs> the bottom dollar? I mean, put a, a nail bit. in the coffin because that's so just done. I, then I asked him, I said, I've got to have producer credit. Like, I'm doing a lot on this. There was nobody else out there that was the directing producer. So I was like, I am doing this role. What's up? How and many episodes do you do before you say, I want to produce a role? I kind of did. It was about, it was when I finished my block of three and they said, would you do four? And I was like, yo, come on. You've taken me away from my family for like two and a half months at this point. Like hook it up and then they're like do you want to come back and do the the finale and I'm like of course I do of course but I think I'm giving you guys like pr my doctorate in television comedy that I earned on workaholics so with like, the boys with the boys the boys of Hollywood you know so it's like then I got it and I'm uh, so I'm producing season three I'm directing season three fuck yeah man congrats yeah, yeah. You're directing so the whole season I'm directing half again. I'm splitting the duties with one other director who edited the film, uh, and she's fantastic. And but I'm producing the entire series. It's like it's like you're never gonna die. Yeah, baby. Pun intended. Recognized and intended. Hey, I like it when it's both. Uh, I want to ask you some 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 specific questions about this process. Yeah. Um, so when you get the call from your When you get the call from your agents, mm -hmm. they say, hey, uh, we got this offer for you from this show. Is that something that happens a lot? And or, uh, second part question, is that something that you noticed a change after you did Murder Mystery with Sandler and Aniston? I actually, this time around, I, I kind of was not looking to do television. I was more looking like, what's the next big movie? What am I going to go do after Murder Mystery? You know what I mean? And I was looking at like Transformers, looking at Marvel flicks, looking at like... What do you mean big, looking at? Like I, I was meeting about those movies. And like, you know... You were meeting with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles too, weren't you? Meeting with Turtles, meeting with all these blockbusters that seem... They're very slow moving. Very slow. So it's like you can attach yourself onto something, but it's like I'm not going to see... I'm not going to actually film anything for the next like year and a half, two years. Would you say it's kind of like pulling fangs? Yeah. <laughs> A little bit like pulling fangs out here in Hollywood, you know? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm done with those. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, uh, I'm not going to edit this out because I need the world to see that I'm not perfect. <laughs> but right when you said it goes really slow, my instinct was pulling fangs. And I thought, too many puns, let's talk. And then I felt, no, it's good. And then I said, and as I said, would you say, before I even got out pulling fangs, I, in my head I was like, oh, oh no. Kyle, just accept it and go. Please don't <laughs> call me out on so it. Sorry. Don't fucking call me out. No, I'm you're so right. Sorry. I'm wrong. You're right and I'm wrong. No, but it's your show. It's your house. I should be, like, not directing you. You know what I mean? I should let go. I should be powerless. But I should be okay with that. Uh, you're saying you should just give up your souls to the, the whatever? The Tiso. The Tiso. No, <laughs> but uh, the Tiso. Yeah, the but, the, but the truth is... Um, uh, in all great work, and I'm being sincere with you now, yeah. uh, no matter who's in charge, the best products come from a collaboration. Correct. So even if I were in charge, I, I don't feel that's what this is. Right. Uh, I want to be able to... <laughs> You're not. <laughs> am, I, am I in charge? No, I don't know, man. I'm just fucking with you. Oh, I just, w I just wanted to acknowledge that uh, we both had the same instinct on that. Uh, that it was too much. Yep. And I'm trying to, like, admit I was wrong with you. Yeah. And... 
move on. <laughs> yeah, and that's cool. I right. respect that 100%. Okay. From a, now I'm being sincere with you. From a collaborative standpoint, and if this were a writer's room, this would be a huge a huge moment. I mean, it's a huge moment because people are, are watching us do this, but like, it's hard to do. That's hard to do as a creative individual. What, admit what, that you oh. were wrong creatively or admit that like, but you know what? You got to try. You always have to try. And that's something that's huge about collaboration and creativity. You got to give it your all. So like, I don't know, maybe like 90% of you was like, don't do the fangs thing. Don't do the fangs thing. We've already done a bunch of fangs things. And like, but also there is that whole like dumb repetition that could have been hit that 10% mark. And if you hit that 10% mark, it's worth it. You're fucking flying, baby. Uh, we're going to continue what we're talking, but I love this because the truth is, you know, you could develop instincts of when something will work or how to do it to make it work or how to do it to make it better, et cetera. But in the field, on set, during the conversation, meaning out of the writer's room, you really don't know. And you just have to have a certain balance between, like, I don't want to, like when you're playing basketball, if I miss five threes in a row, maybe stop shooting for a little bit. But like, you have to try and do them. And there's a fine balance. And as a creative, working with other people who everyone's different, when are you allowed to take those big swings? But like, yeah, there is something too. I, like I am, I want what we just did, but like to make a joke and then it's no good. Be like, eh, let's move on and like have no ego attached to it. But I want to feel free to try. Yes. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. And you should feel free to try. You should like, and you should do that. And it, it's kind of like, you know, I'm skilled enough as a collaborator that, and I've had enough of those moments to where I don't even really give a fuck that you made the fangs joke four times or whatever. It's like, we're moving on, but we're talking about it because I think this is beneficial for everybody out there to understand that sometimes that stuff don't, it doesn't work, you know, and it's okay. But that's where the skill of the craftsman comes in and where practice is so important. You have to have a rapport with the people that you're playing with so that, and a respect for the people that you're playing with because you can know, I just set you up for something huge. Are you gonna take it? Take the swing. You mean with my bat? Yeah. <laughs> exactly, dude. With your flying bat. As a director. See, you're very good at puns. Each other and sentences. <laughs> <laughs> you're great at it. Thank you got you. a whip smart brain, you know, and it's really like you see the you see it, man. It's cool. As a director, when you're on set with uh with uh people who like to improvise and are good at improvising. Shadows crew loves improvising. And now if, if something is going where either you don't think it's funny and or it doesn't work, same thing, just like we're not gonna use this. But where, what's the, the politics that you play? Uh, this is a broad, a broad version of how do you let people know, let's stop wasting time because there's so much going on and we know we're not gonna do this but while also trying to figure out you know, you don't want to shut somebody's energy down. Right. You don't want to stop them. You don't want to like, you know, block their creative juices. So I kind of let it flow. Like I'll give it a pass. You know what I mean? Just be like, all right, where are we going? But also be direct with what worked in my opinion, because that's my job is to come up after this after the take pay attention to everything hear all the jokes and say you know we meandered over this way for a little bit we meandered back in when we got back in to the story that's the stuff that's going to stay in the movie it's not that that's not funny that's very funny but in this particular scene at this particular moment in the story we need to stay on track so those new jokes that you came up with but that's the beauty. They wouldn't have come up with those new jokes if right. they hadn't meandered. So you have to have love for the meandering, like kind of where are we going? What's the jokes? What's happening? And then have to be critically uh, critical in your thinking and assess what works because as we all know, time is money. So you can't just be like, you can't just be like, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. And then you're, what are you doing to your editors? You're just like, yeah. you pick it or like the edit becomes super tough. I'd rather come up with that. I'd rather do that work because then you're not expending that energy in a place that's like 
like you, why why are we being inefficient with our energy yeah. we know what we have to do we know the story we're telling we know the jokes that are on the page we also found some good jokes so guess what we did the job let's go do the next one what oh shit what's he doing up there it's just uh m much like your egg sandwich the vampire bat is hanging upside down we'll be right back with a word from our sponsors huh. hey there goblins listen this is a time for me to pay some bills. It's also a time for me to make some money to buy some Magic the Gathering cards. But I, I also want to suggest to you an idea for how you could be creative. Have you ever had an idea for an app, for example, that you didn't know how to make come to fruition? Or software for a website and you just don't know how to execute it? Believe me, I know the value of getting some good help. We all need a little help sometimes. And that's where Essential Designs comes in. They develop custom software and apps for your big idea. Come, take a walk with me. You see, some say that Essential Designs... Well, this, that doesn't work. Some say that Essential Designs is the Marshall Rug Gallery of custom app and software designing, but how will you know unless you try it? You dream it, they build it. Come walk with me. Head over to EssentialDesigns.net and use Tyso for 10% off your first project. That's Essential Designs, and if you don't know how to spell essential like me, it's E-S-S-E-N-T-I-A-L, and if you don't know how to spell designs, then chances are you don't have a great idea for an app anyway. <laughs> So again, that's head over to EssentialDesigns.net using promo code TYSO, T-Y-S-O, for 10% off. Now, back to the podcast. And we're back. Kyle, could you explain uh, to me when people say he's an actor's director? He's an actor's director. You, you know that term, right? Yeah, yeah. I, th I think I can understand that. Um, I, I take it as like... Uh, this, in a similar way to people say he's a comics comic. Like, he start Like, he's... Actors, directors are, uh, uh, like, p directors that were actors or have experience acting, and they talk to the actor a certain way. I guess what I'm wondering is, yeah. um, in, di in directing, uh, you have a vision, and you want to be able to execute it a certain way. But there's so many moving parts, and you have to be efficient and clear and also kind and supporting their ego in explaining what your vision is. And I, who, who I want to be, I mean, I think we talked about this last time, but my, where do I see myself? What do I want to be doing for 20 years? I want to be directing things. Yeah. And I am excited to learn and do stuff and I shadow every job I've been on. But what I think the, one of the obstacles for me that will probably take longer than I realize, so I guess now I know is learning how to tell people things. You know, like even with you, with the snap stuff, and I think it was fine because we're on a similar frequency and you've seen this and you've been here. But like, if I say snap, I say, don't move. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to put the stuff in position, but you are sitting there not knowing what's going on and I have to explain. Is, is yeah. what I'm saying makes sense? Like, what well, have you yeah. learned no, on how no, to I mean, communicate? But, but what you're doing, I, I have a rapport with you. So one of the first things is like, I trust you. I'm not going to walk into your set, you know, your house and say, I mean, I almost did this today where I was like, I know what, I know how to do this better than you. But I'm, I, the best stuff is like, look, I know you know how to do these snaps. You know how to keep track of these snaps. You know how the goblin comes in. You know where the goblin should be. You have experience with all of that. So I trust you. And that's the first step is trust. I think if you don't have your actor's trust, then you're completely fucked from the beginning. How do you get trust other than your credentials? Uh, I think you have to have a genuine love for what you're doing. You have to really believe in what you're doing. You have to like, you, and also you need to know what it's like as an actor. This is where it comes back to the term being a, an actor's director. You have to have empathy for what it's like to be in front of that lens. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people, directors will be like, um, Hey, you know, you, the, your punctuation was a little bit off right there. Can you take a small little beat in between those words? And uh, that's, that's the note I'm giving you. And it's like, what the fuck kind of note is that? Like, that's like a very hard note to accomplish as a 
an actor where it's like, okay, so he wants me. So now I, I know that's the actor's job. Like you have to put a thought there and invent a thought. But if you're an actor's director, you can come in and say, after you say this word, have a small thought mm -hmm. and have this, maybe this cycles through your brain and then know your edit and know what you can and what you, when you got it, you know, and don't overwork these people. It's like, just to use like a construction metaphor, it's like, I need you to go put that roof on and I need you to hammer every nail three times. Why the fuck would I do that to any worker? Like if you know how to hammer the nail and if I see when you're halfway through making the roof that you're not hammering it how I want you to do it, I'm gonna say, hold up a second, hold it like this. You keep banging your thumb. Yeah, it's the difference between choreography and intention. Like d doing a multicam, one of the big techniques that you get good at, there's two main techniques that I could think of off the top of my head that are specific to a multicam. One is holding for laughter, live time, mm. and your performance, you, you can't practice something a certain way. You have to have instincts right, yeah. of when something will laugh and how long to hold, yeah. and when you're holding to not just freeze, but <laughs> to do something in it. That's and the tough. other the other is because it's a live play, it's the blocking. And different takes, you may have different intentions or want to stand up at a, 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 a beat earlier or later or whatever it is. And you can make different inflections and choices, but you have to dance you know, because you're dancing with partners. Yes. So when doing a multicam and someone, the director will, will there's, there's the choreography notes and they'll say, when you do this, I need you to hammer, basically hit it three times. I need you to stand over there and move over there. But there's nothing creative about that. And it's, I found it to be, I guess, challenging, but it was definitely didn't feel like acting because, hey, remember, you're going to be really upset here. So whatever, that's an intention note. But there's sometimes you have to give notes that are, I need you to stand, uh, I guess technically. Don't you need stuff technically out of an actor that has nothing to do with their performance, but for you to capture the picture that you want? Yeah, sometimes you have to hit certain mechanics in order for scenes to work, like you just do. Now, when you're doing a live a multicam, your space and what you can do is very limited because you're on a stage and you only can walk 10 steps from stage right to stage left so that's all you have and you have a table in between and so you can kind of as an actor you can maybe invent something to do right there but also it has to be seen from the audience it's not something that you can get in on so i guess there's a certain level of freedom when you're doing single cam or movies or something i, I want to i'm sorry to interrupt i want to i want to like to be specific about that what i'm asking is how could you tell an actor something technical like is there do you have a trick of telling them something technical that isn't well what do you mean what do you mean by that you know, let's get a little bit more specific sure. let's dive in sure so i'll speak from my from my point of view yeah i have people come on this podcast that are friends and i have people that come on this podcast that i've literally never even met before right i now always send clips to people that i've never met just to get an idea of the tone but when someone comes in and they're doing a snap something i want to find I, i'm still playing with what's the best most efficient way to tell the person freeze or look around or whatever it might be um, without having to, here's exactly what it is. Without having to do like a lion read and shit? What I'm, what I'm doing now, I'm, I'm, I'm over communicating. Without, I don't want to tire yeah. out the guest. I want us to be playing and then just take a, a beat in, so I could give instruction. The thing is though, the director's job, you should be, you should be expanding their mental so that they don't have to actually, you're, you're not tiring them out by over explaining, really. You're tiring them out by having them do it once and you don't know what you want. So, and then you're like, oh shit, sorry, actually we gotta do that again because I just thought like the fucking vampire bat should crawl in and crawl down on your head. So then you're like, so okay, so now I have much. to do it again. But I love that performance, I thought it was great. So. And then it's like, oh, you know what? Take three, fucking the vampire is going to swing down and then you're going to cradle him like this and it's going to be a baby. And you're like, fucking hey, man, why don't you just get your shit straight so I can do that all on one so that my energy as an actor can translate through the lens and on to, uh, you know, infinite time. Because that's what my job is, is to make my energy go into infinite time through the lens. So you think I could spend, a, you know, a minute explaining something if I just do it all up top once? Dude, 
that is the key. Like when I, when we do a lot of directors are afraid of like blocking rehearsals and shit like that, where it's like, you know what? No, don't bring them in. And we don't do that. Like, we'll just do it shot by shot. I know this shot. I know this shot. I know this shot for me. I'm like, fuck yeah, that. Then the Get everybody can't do in it. here. Right. I want to hear everybody's ideas. I want to workshop the whole thing. I want it. I want them to know what it is. I want them to know what I'm thinking. So we know the intentions of each other. And then the scene is whole, and then we only have to shoot it a couple times, and we move our cameras and do that. Otherwise, when I started in this in this in this Hollywood with my boys, I <laughs> I would go do like community or go do something else, and I'd watch these directors direct, and they'd be sitting behind the monitor and they'd be like, "Say this line, say this line, say this now." And it's like, what the fuck is, how do you create like that? How is the scene? I know that they're trusting the edit, but it still is stiff as fuck. And there's no chemistry because these people are not interacting. It's like, I, that's not how I work. I, didn't, I never liked that. Yeah. I like getting every, like, we all have a job to do. And it's fun when we all work together. So let's get into the block together. Did you have fun with what we were doing with our changes? Did you feel tired out at all? with the bits that we were doing at the beginning of this? I mean, you know, changing for me is kind of a, a, a workout. So yeah, I was a little tired, but that wasn't your problem. That was my own physical <laughs> fitness issue. But I'm saying for the fact that we were doing those bits, if we know that's part of the job, were you comfortable with the way we did it? 100%. And how did we get to that? I mean, you want to pull back the sausage? We talked on the phone. Yeah. And we texted and we said, let's do this bit let's yeah, do you this were, bit you were coming from the photo shoot you literally had options and I said hey it might be funny if we yeah. don't just change this one time we change this time we change this time so I knew what I was in for right like I, I and we had talked about it that's technically our blocking rehearsal right so then when I show up if I'm sweating because I'm changing and you're like come on man I'm getting hot because I'm wearing the jacket <laughs> I know that like okay cool all right all right we're doing this like I'm in it you know I'm committed because I'm creatively yeah committed to this bit with Rick Glassman for his podcast today. That's what I'm doing. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I, in my head, I know what this final product looks like. So it's like, yeah, we're putting in the work, but let's do it. And I just have to be uh, uh, considerate of the guest outside who's literally in the heat doing the activity. But one of the things is, it's like, you can't rush these things. You know what I mean? Like yes, certain of things, course so I like, know what you mean. There's a time, like when I was first directing, I remember rushing myself a lot and being like, Hurr! okay, get the shot, get this, get this, don't cut, don't cut, just move it around, move it around, get this, okay, now get the close up and do that. This is when I was doing like internet videos, you know, and then even sometimes on Workaholic season one where it's like, I don't want to have to try and get the whole crew moving in one direction because I just want to shoot this and get the fuck out because really I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I have never done this before. So let's just be faster than everybody else and nobody will catch on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now I think after a decade and being one of four Hollywood boys, it's like I, I get it. I, I feel and I'm also way more tired now. I'm almost 37 years old and I'm just like I'm confident. I've done enough work. I know what my job is. I know how to capture funny. Mm -hmm. I know how to capture a lot of different emotions and I'm not as rushed and I won't rush. Like you, you're not going to find me trying to pull that, that like wool over the actor's eyes anymore. It's going to be like, well, let's just sit here and figure this out. Yeah. What's your joke? Okay, cool. There's something that I that um, I don't think this is an insecurity. Um, it might be, but it is definitely some type of awareness that might be heightened. Which is, I still like if this if my podcast were a huge successful podcast where people are it is. thank you, people know about it. Well, if That's it was why I'm here, thank you. <laughs> but if it were, you know, bigger, yeah, you'll um, get there. Where where people, it still feels like, you know, I, I believe you want to do this. You even told me you wanted to come back on, but there's still. It still is. You're still doing me a favor. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, sure. When, when people come over to doing me a favor, it's different. Like, so there's something that I want to make sure that I'm aware of when I have people come over. They're doing me a favor. Don't ask people too much. But the truth is, I want to do the bits, do the changes, take our time. And but some people are more into it. And 
And the cost benefit is what if we get these fun edits early on in the episode, but then the back half of the episode, the guest is now tired and or out of it or not having a good time. And there's really no right or wrong. It's just everybody's different. But I want to find, I just want to continue to develop my instincts to know, don't do the fang joke. <laughs> you know, like like I've grown to the part where I recognize don't do it, but I still do it. But like the next step is I won't. Yeah, but Rick, you're the comedian that pushes those areas. So like you're also in the world as the comedian mm -hmm. who has to check that and see if that's an open slot for you to slide right into. But the cost is that, affecting the guest. The, yeah, I mean, I would suggest doing like a time analysis of how long you do your intro versus yeah. how long you do your, you know, like maybe you li this start part. limiting your episodes and you're like, we're going to talk for 50 minutes and then we're going to spend 25 minutes on intros and stuff like that. Yeah, I, but I like doing tough. it literally. It's, it's, and it's cool that you, you're just organic with it. Yeah. I think that's also a skill that people respect and it's also fun for the guest because we're like what are we gonna do yeah i like it the most <laughs> i i'm the same with stand-up um uh, and we talked about this because uh, i might, might cut to a little clip of the first time you came on but you directed my first tv taping for adam divine's house party yeah buddy and uh there's a there's that a clip is circulating around you brought it back yeah i posted it back uh i'll put a link in the bio and you can click that eye in the corner so or whatever good. so but, good but there's something as a performer that i am my best I believe all people are, but I almost need to. I need to be in the audience a little bit too. Mm -hmm. Like that, I need to be in the audience too, right. and playing whatever that is. So yeah, to to never know exactly where it's going to go isn't just spontaneous. It's part of being present. Well, that's the fun of it. That's yeah. like the fun and some of the magic, you know. Yeah. But I want I want to see, say on course and go back to where we were before. We'll kind of use this as the uh, the interlude. What's it called in a play? The song that keeps coming back. Oh, the theme. Yeah, but there's a there's a word. Yeah, it's like the overture. Overture. But the overture is actually, the overture is at the beginning, which it's like a medley of all the songs used in the play. I'm looking at the one that it's something that's at the beginning and then it comes throughout. So leave some comments. Let me know what it's called. I want to say it's the theme, but I know it's like something more than that. But it is like the thematic, the sonic, the sonically. Thematic. I'm moving on. Doesn't matter. It's a term. No, uh, what is it? It's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're tiring me. Uh, but back to this. This uh, I'm so interested in this. Uh, you got offered to do Where We Are in the Shadows. And then... Uh, what we do in the shadows. What I say? Where, where are we, we are on the shadows? The shadows. Sorry. Where are we on the shadows? Uh, where are we on the shadows, by the way? Where Episode are we on the four shadows? now? Five? Yeah. We need to be producing. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, dude. And but but the, part, the part of after three episodes, when yeah. you're like, I am... I deserve, if I'm doing more, to be better credited, better paid, whatever it is, what's, could you explain once you're asked to do more, what the thought process is of what you feel you deserve and how you go about that was, getting it? It's actually very hard and a very crazy internal battle as an artist and a worker. Um, because as an artist, I'm like, thank God I have this job and this is the most fun I could have on a television show right now is working with vampires, supernatural, who can say anything and I can put all of my darkness into this comedy, which is like a dream, like honestly a dream. But there's also a part of me that's like when I get the paycheck, it's like, well, this is like around workaholic season one. So am I supposed to, am I so, we only negotiated for two and it was fine for me with, but like, am I, so, what am I supposed to do? Cause right. I'm like so happy about this. And also there's nobody else doing the job of director producer. So I'm inherently going to be like, what does that, what does that mean? Because there's a producer on set, but not a director producer. Well, there's like, you know, there's the producers in the writer's room that also oversee yeah. production, but I'm not a writer on the show. I'm just a director and a producer, meaning that I'm going to take what's on the page. You weren't a producer page. yet. No, but I was acting like one. And that's why I was, because I was taking what was on the page and saying like, how are we going to accomplish this? How are we going to do this? But isn't that the role of the director? We need to, yeah, but I'm interfacing with the writers. I'm going all through it. And and there was nobody else that filled this role. Okay. And this role is an important role on almost every television show. Who's your directing producer? Who's the one that's gonna go to the writers and say, 
this doesn't quite work. So my, and who's the one who's going to go to production and say, you need to start building this now? My experience, uh, I've either either had a director producer, which I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But when I did the comedians, Larry Charles directed and he was producer. He's it. But then I do my pilot for Amazon or when I did uh, undateable stuff, the Bill Lawrence is the showrunner show and runner, producer. Yep, yep. And then we have a director and the director directs and then talks to Bill. That's your producing director. Oh, so the so who do you talk to? The showrunner, Paul Sims. Yeah. So how how is how is a director on a multicam who's just directing, not a producer, talking to Bill, different than you talking to the head writer? You know, I think it it's because I took ownership. I think it's because I was like, I'm gonna oversee, and some of the other guest directors were coming to me, asking me what's up, and I think it was just because I'm like, I did this job for ten years. On workaholics. on workaholics and so even if i'm as a as a director you're kind of like sometimes if you're just a guest you just step in and you're like i'm working bits with people and i'm going to make sense. this better and whatnot and your hands are kind of to yourself and you're there for four days and that's what it like is like guest starring on a show kind of and you're like you're not really going in there and pitching stuff you're not like trying to solve all these technical issues with the visual effects and stuff like that you're like how do you want me to do it okay cool i'm yeah. gonna do it there's a lot of like you don't actually take the ownership of the show sometimes you're just like babysitting the show um but in this particular case it, they needed somebody to step up and take ownership of it creatively and say like okay this is how we're going to do it on all these bits this is how it's going to happen and i am not one to anymore to just be like mm -hmm. uh-huh uh-huh right sure even though i know we're walking into like this hectic ass set like i don't want to bring the actors into this hectic ass set i want to solve it all for them i want to get it all right and going is that you as somebody who's a hard worker or is that you who's somebody who has the experience to be able to visualize and know how to do it best does I think that question make sense it's both it's both well it's, why did you not used to do it well why did you I would just keep your hands to yourself well because i would just go do like an episode of community oh and so i'd be like all right i'm doing an episode of community and like Dan Harmon knows what's going on. The DP kind of knows what's up. And the other Joe and Anthony Russo tell me kind of what I need to do. And then you kind of squeeze yourself into this world, but it's a much more rigid world where it's like everybody's got these roles. And you know, when I went to Shadows, it was kind of like fantastic scripts, fantastic premise, fantastic sets. They, they had already done season one, but here they go with season two. And it was a new crew in Toronto and they it was kind of like okay this crew needs to know what's happening right so now. So you literally had another job to fill. Yes. And somebody had to do it. Right. And so I was like, well, I'm That makes sense. I'm here. Okay, I'm so do you've done 3 uh and you oh you two, you negotiated two. I did. Yes, yeah, so at I first. yeah, and then they were like, can you do 3 while I was out there? Or One right more. before I got on the plane, they're like, you want to do a block of 3 instead of a block of 2. Meaning come back for another 10 days. Meaning you got another episode that you're going to do. You're going to stay out here for another, yeah, another 10 days or so, like six, six days or whatever. And I was like, you know, to my wife, I'm like, should I go do it? I'll be out there anyways. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. And then I'll come back. It'll be before Thanksgiving and all that. And then <laughs> while I was out there, they're like, well, uh, we need you to do another one. And now, is this because uh, he's on Avatar and... They, he thought he would be back sooner than he was? It's really because of James Cameron, because James Cameron was kept holding him. Yes. We so got to get him on the pod to talk about it. Yeah, James Cameron thought, like, I guess Jermaine thought that he was going to be out in Toronto a little earlier than he was, but James Cameron kept holding him for another week. What is Jermaine week, doing on advertiser, uh, Avatar? Another week. He says he plays some kind of a cool scientist. Cool. Yeah. Scientist. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's Avatar. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, make me blue. <laughs> We're running out of money and energy here. Uh, all right, so so you so now cut, cut to the porno parody of Avatar. <laughs> yeah, but, but blur everything but the dicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so get get to me this 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 decision between I'm grateful for the work, but also I deserve to be paid and credited properly. Well, thankfully, at that time, I had had a chance to kind of show where I was making myself indispensable. And, you know, everybody, all the producers on the show, Paul Sims is a fantastic showrunner. So he kind of had my back and, you know, and, and we just worked it out. And that's that was it. And then I got to talk to my lawyer, got to talk to my agent. I want to before you get I want to I want to like to really see. So you, you finish three or before you finish three, they say, will you do two more? They say, well, I do one more. 
So that's and at that point, that's when I was like, okay, I'm I'm producing this now. Okay, like, so what I'm do you not, do from this there? is no more of a gimme. This is like me going to the showrunner and to FX and to my people and to like my manager, my agent, and my lawyer, and saying like to everybody, like this is more than what I initially signed up for. Do we all understand that? And we can all see that this is more. Are you ner? Is this decision? Uh, is it like? As soon as I ask, do you go, huh, I do deserve more? Or right away, do you go, listen, I, I deserve, like, did you know or did you have to think about it? I knew at this point. Because I you knew. probably thought about it at the third one, maybe? I, I was thinking about it as soon as uh -huh. it was like, who's doing the job? <laughs> so, so is there a way that you present it to where, like, are you at all, if not concerned, at least aware of, like, I want to go to them and say, I deserve this, but there's a certain way to approach it? I think at that point, you kind of have to be willing to put it on the line and be like, look, you want me back? Because they wanted me to do four. And then there were rumblings of me doing the finale, co going home for a little bit and coming back. But they all, they really didn't want me to go home. They wanted me to stay there and, and oversee the other productions. And I was like, I gotta go home. Like mm -hmm. I was supposed to be home like, you know, a month and a half ago. And I'm, I only have van shoes and it's freezing. Like I'm, I'm sick, I gotta go recoup for a second. I did not know I was, that this, tour was going to be like this. Um, I'm and sorry, but it's, it's time we have to cut to our, our sponsor, Vans. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've always loved Vans, and I hope that <laughs> Vans is listening right now. <laughs> because my boy Rick deserves a sponsorship, and I think that, like, I think Vans is the perfect outlet for this guy. He's a diehard skater. Yeah. No, I'm really more looking to get into, 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 into bed with Bombas. <laughs> Um, because <laughs> when your shoes are off, you only see the socks. Yeah. And we're back. And then basically I was kind of like, look, if you want, you have to leverage yourself a little bit where it's like, I want to come do this, but you got to kind of work with me here, you know? And who like, do you say that to? Your representation or the showrunner? I say it to my representation. I say, look, go in and try and get something. I say it to FX. Email or call? Call. I say it to FX. I say it to Paul. I say it to the showrunner, who is also taking it to FX. Who is also your who has your back? You said. Yeah, who's a, who's really cool and like you know like I I want to do the job, but and I will do the job, and they know I'll do the job. It's just like come on now, like <laughs> yeah, I don't know. How, how you feeling now? Because uh, when we spoke on the phone um, uh, a couple weeks ago, if that before you coming on, you were telling me a couple of things. Uh, about you find out about uh, bipolar, not bipolar. No, I'm sorry. Um, no. uh, multiple uh, uh, personality <laughs> syndrome. No, it's a, a borderline personality disorder. Uh, BPD. Uh, yeah, I've been in therapy for seven years, and uh, I just got hit with that. Like, I mean, I hit with it. Like, you know, but like I've been in therapy for seven years, mostly focusing on addictions and trying to get rid of certain things because I smoked since I was. Smoked cigarettes since I was 10 years old. I drank since I was 16 years old and smoked weed since I was about 16 years old. And now, didn't like, you stop everything but weed and then you stopped weed? I did. I stopped everything about seven years ago. And that's when I, I stopped uh, smoking cigarettes and alcohol seven years ago. And uh, because I, that's when I started therapy was to, to understand what was going on with myself and try and tackle that. Uh, those addictions, which really had my soul, like the cigarettes, I was smoking like 40 cigarettes a day. And I did not think that I was going to be able to direct without smoking cigarettes. And what, is that, what does a cigarette do? Is it like coffee? I've never smoked a cigarette. A cigarette's kind of like coffee. It gives you, it gives you like a buzz, you know, it gives you a specific, uh, it's crazy. Like my actual arms are getting like cool right now thinking about this. But it's like like the veins inside. I don't know why it does that, but I just feel it. Hold your arm up. Yeah. Now, uh, goblin vampire just came. And yeah. Dug his hands into you. Ah, ah, and that's the now, vice, baby. Now show us your teeth. Your fangs are growing. <laughs> and uh, uh, oh, no, that was about a thousand bucks. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so when you smoke a cigarette and you need more, is it because the coffee, caffeine, like the the high, ran away? Is it the oral well, fixation? I there's a lot of the, there's a lot of the oral fixation, I suppose. I mean, and it's just a lot of 
finding a way to go off and be by yourself, you know, where it's like, I'm going to go smoke a cigarette and nobody else is around me. That was something that I liked. Like, that's why I didn't think I was going to be able to direct when I smoked, when I didn't smoke cigarettes, because if something had to be done on set, I would be like, hold on one second. And I'd go out and I'd fire it up and I'd think, I'd pace, I'd think, I'd think, and all of a sudden it'd be like, boom, and I got it, you know, but really all I'm doing is breathing and thinking. That's all I needed was to breathe and to think about what I needed to do, but I had plugged cigarettes into that breathing and thinking. Right. Um, so, so you started smoking more as you were working more? Is that fair to, uh, to assume? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I smoked a lot. Like, I was smoking like two packs a day, and it, it did get crazy, and my wife was like, I don't know that I'm, we were just you know, girlfriend, boyfriend at the time. And she was like, I don't know that I'm going to be able to, you know, be with somebody that smokes as much as you because it's pretty nasty. Uh -huh. And so I was like, fuck. All right. And I had tried to quit like probably 50, 50 or 100 times, like seriously, like just like I'm going to give it up. I don't like it. I hated myself for smoking cigarettes as much as I did. It just I were smelled. you ashamed of it. Did you hide it ever? Yes. So like you were, it was a real addiction that you wanted to stop and you couldn't. Yeah, I could not stop. I would go out in the side of the house and smoke cigarettes and just know every time I would take like two drags and then stomp it out. I would throw the pack away. I would crush the pack and then find myself at the store buying another pack. And then like, so I, I had to quit smoking ciggies. And then I was like, uh, I realized that I would do pretty good and then I would have some booze. I would drink a beer or have a cold know, one. I would drink a cold one or have a Bud Heavy or like, you know, a Tecate Light or yeah. whatever. Coors. Coors, uh, tap the mountains, <laughs> tap the Rockies, yeah, you know, man. Hell tap, yeah. tap the mountains. Just you know, with one of the boys, maybe even. Hanging with the boys of Hollywood, we were always tapping Bud Heavy. Cracking them up. We were cracking them, doggy. Just like, <laughs> chuggies? <laughs> chuggy, chuggy, chuggy. Yeah, baby. Ziggy, ziggy, now, ziggy. My, now my hands get getting cold you know what i mean so with the boys of hollywood we were always doing it and i realized like oh shit i've got these two things tied like when i crack a bud heavy and mm. do a chuggy <laughs> <laughs> i have to even if i don't have siggies on me and i haven't smoked for like a day or two and i'm doing pretty good as soon as i crack it and tap the mountains i'm out in the parking lot asking somebody to bum a smoky tell me tell me if uh if this looks about what it feels like to crack a cold one all right man i've been having such a tough day kyle oh, I, I i don't know i don't really know what to do have you ever tried cracking a chuggy cracking a chuggy yeah Beer. <sighs> yeah, that's about right. That's yeah, it. Anyway, what the fuck are you talking about? Well, I, I would just crack a chuggy and then I would have to go bum a smoke off somebody. You know what I mean? And like, I realized, fuck, dude, I got to give up the booze in order to get to the ciggies because I loved this girl that I was with, my now wife. And it's like, and, and I also knew that I didn't want to smoke. That was the key is like, I didn't want to fucking put more of this garbage in my lungs, but I couldn't stop. All right, so I'm gonna ask if this uh, analogy is fair. Would you say that your girl was beating, the, was, what, was the main goal? That's the beating the game in a video game. Um, and the beer is kind of uh, Goro and the cigarettes are Shang Tsung. Fair. Is that fair? The beer is the Goro and the cigarettes are Shang Tsung. Yeah. And also, yeah. Goro is holding four exactly, dude. cold ones. Because that's binging, baby. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, so starting therapy helps you break these things? Yeah, I started therapy and then I was like kind of, you know, a lot of questions of like, do you really want to stop? Are you ready to do it? Like, what's up? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to get rid of it. I love it. Like, it's me. Why would I get rid of myself? What does that mean? Like you're literally an identity? It was my identity. My identity was smoking. My identity was drinking. My identity was these... Was health uh, concerns an issue or is it just that health your girl didn't like it? Health was a major like concern. It? Health was a major concern because I had at that point, I mean, not to get too crazy, but there had been some nights where I woke up after partying and been like, whoa, I'm still alive. Nice. 
where you wake up like in your car somewhere and you're like, I drove? Where'd I drive? Oh, oh wow. wow. I drove way the fuck over here and I don't remember it. So yeah, health was starting to be like, I got to check myself, you know? Um, so then thankfully my Directors Guild of America had- Shout out to the DGA, we'll put their Instagram handle up here. Absolutely, they offered a program for directors to get rid of smoking. And that was, they paid for Chantix, which is like this crazy ass fucking drug that you pop a pill and it's like, then when you smoke- Ray Liotta did advertised for it, didn't he? I, I don't know, this shit's crazy. It fucks with your dreams. I really don't think I needed it. I think it fucked with my biochemistry so much that I just was like, ah! But what it would do is like, it would make it so if you smoked a cigarette, you got a headache that lasted for days. It's like a shock collar for a dog. Pretty much. It's like changing the Pavlov response of smoking cigarettes, essentially. And so- Paw uh, intended? Paw intended. <laughs> and so, yeah, I just kind of, and I committed. I did like, the the thing that really helped me was, <laughs> like it sounds so dumb now, but I put a star on the calendar every day I didn't have a cigarette. I, that, 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 that makes, I think about that all the time, about how those worked for me. It, it really did for me too. Like I would be even like out of town and I'd call my, my, my wife and say, can you please put a star on the calendar? Because you see and, your accomplishments, and right? And take a picture of it and send it to me because I need to know that I've gotten 15 days. Like I need to count those days and understand that. Then the other thing that really helped me was I had an app that showed me how much money I was saving mm. by not buying a pack or two packs a day. Because that was like a... $14 a day habit. And then with the, with the alcohol, it was like every week I was like, Whoa, I'm saving like $125 a week just from not doing these things. And you could set goals where it's like, what do you want to buy when you save a certain amount? Right. And so I kind of just use the reward system the same way an addiction works, but that's uh six twenties every week, every, every, uh, Six twenties, dude. With a little remainder. That's huge. So why not stop weed though? Because you felt weed didn't affect well, you negatively. Well, so at that point, I was still doing workaholics, full disclosure, and I really did not want to go straight edge. I really because it would affect you, your creative. I thought it was going to affect my creative, and I also we were still like kind of living. Or I was still living this character a little bit, and I Carl, Carl, the drug dealer, and I just was like, I don't know if I want to do. I don't know if I want to give it all up. We still had to go do press. We still had to hang with fans and the fans really wanted to like drink and chuggy the, the icy coldies, you know what I mean? And then- You're saying cracking them. Cracking crack them the, open. Crack the chuggies. And I, since I wasn't cracking the chuggies, I figured I should go ahead and, and smoke the dubs. And so I went deep into sativa and sativa actually emulated the nicotine for me. So I was like smoking a lot of weed to get past the cigarette cravings because it was the same kind of like upper where my mind was like yes so you stopped cigarettes and, and drinking but your weed went up my weed went up tremendously it went up a lot it took and then not till recently did i give up weed and it's only been like six months now and that started as like a one month experiment uh -huh. and i still don't know what i'm gonna do with that like if i'm done forever or what i'm just it's i'm it's still an experiment at yeah. this point i'm just kind of learning myself uh but i i smoked for like i smoked daily hourly for like six and a half years tell me about bpd and what what that what that realization meant to you and where you think you could learn from that yeah, the I mean, well, mental health is a, is a huge issue. Um, I, you know that. Uh, and I. What think, do you mean? <laughs> Kyle. Kyle. Specialist Revilio. Boom. We're back. Yeah, uh, mental illness, man. It's rough. Is that it's what we're talking about? Mental illness or mental awareness? Mental illness, mental awareness, mental health. It's all uh, 
translates into comedy very well. Would you say it Transylvania's into comedy oh, very well? Damn, you know it, baby. <laughs> Kyle, listen. Uh, well, I, I don't know uh, how much you want to get into all of it. It's it's like it's I'm I'm new to it. When did you get your diagnosis? I just kind of found out about a month and a half ago. Like, and it wasn't like a diagnosis. It was just kind of like my therapist saying, "Hey, does any of this stuff feel like what goes on inside your brain?" And I started reading it, and I'm like, "Whoa, this is like what I've been." I've yes, this is what is this? Could you give any examples of what you saw that you connected? I to? mean, you can read the the BPD and all that, but I think it's definitely where like my dark comedy comes from and where a lot of my comedy comes from so when I read it I said like well you know this is this is definitely me and I have definitely helped myself get through this in my life through the use of comedy mm -hmm. and by deflecting some of these feelings and some of these like internal struggles that I may have channeling them into into comedy so in that respect I don't consider it uh an illness, I don't consider it like, like I don't think I change at all. You know, now I just am aware of what yeah. might be going on and I'm really pumped to read about it and understand what has been learned about the brain that may have BPD. And you know, it's like kind of, there's like a little bit of a playbook now that I got. That's how, when I got my uh, uh, autism diagnosis, that's how it was, it's like, Oh, there's like, I've created my own tools, some of which are great comedy, some of which are uh, perhaps inefficient, yeah. you know, comedy, my, my fang jokes. Yeah, for me, addictions, like for real, that fit right into it. And it's like, oh, I have been shedding this stuff. I have been trying to get out of it. But you get this playbook and it's like, it's such a win because, oh, this is something that other people have gone through yep. and uh, you could learn from. Yeah. Is, uh, for people who are listening, um, people who watch this a lot, I've talked about certain things with my, with my OCD and my, I guess I'll just call them my obstacles, especially as a child, but uh, I haven't talked on uh, borderline personality disorder. And for people listening, is there any, when I was reading up about, uh, at the time, Asperger's syndrome, which is now just considered uh, level one autism, mm -hmm. uh, there are certain things that were like, oh, that are really connected uh, with me. And that was what went from, I think this might be the case to me meeting with a professional. Is there, are, could you say any either character traits or obstacles that you feel like you had that people listening might not necessarily borderline personality disorder, but recognize, oh, this is something that other people struggle with? Uh, I think one of them is just like, you know, the confidence in yourself and how you just keep filling, trying to fill this hole that's inside of yourself. Um, and for me, it, it was, I think why I actually am a director because I just kept filling myself with all these things that I needed to do and trying to get inflate myself because at the core I had trouble with who I was and what I was. Does that mean like you don't know who you are or you don't like who you are? It means you don't like who you are. Is that what borderline personality disorder is though? Isn't that where you, you feel differently different times? With borderline personality disorder, there's about nine different traits. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to have like a certain amount of Right, them. like four of them or something and then you're considered. Whatever the number is, I, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, and with me it was, I mean, heavy, uh, heavy, on, the, uh, heavy on the addictions, heavy on the self-destructive behavior. Uh, heavy on the not knowing, like not having a strong sense of self and wanting uh -huh. to please everybody around you. Um, and yeah, I mean, and then, you know, on the self harm is really like, that's the self destructive, but the self harm is something I, I always would, I have no problem joking about that. I have no problem like joking about suicide, talking about suicide. But like, you know, back in the day, I used to say like when, when me and the boys of Hollywood were a sketch group, I was like, well, hey, one of us is gonna have to martyr ourselves in order to, you know, be seen. And, and I was happy, <laughs> I was happy to do it. Um, but I'm not going to because the boys of Hollywood and my homies and my family like kind of helped me out and helped me through this. And I had good relationships in my life and whatnot. But, but those types of areas for comedy, I think I was not afraid of because I was having these deep, dark thoughts and 
I don't know, man. I don't know. That, at that time in my life, it was really weird. I, I had a lot of addictions. I had a lot of different. Yeah. Are you are you feeling all right talking about it? Yeah. I mean, I guess I guess a little bit. I don't know that I'm like a champion for it yet because it's so new. It's like, right. It's, it's just so new to me and figuring it out. There's one thing. Okay, I can't talk about one thing. One thing that I have a tendency to do. Why don't you tell us when we get back? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, (laughs) for real. (laughs) After a word, (laughs) it's the worst commercial break. Yeah, we don't need to. I mean, really, it's like. I am genuinely very interested and want to hear. The one thing that, like, really. After a word. Oh, that's me. There's this thing called like splitting where you just see black and white. You're just like, you're, you're not in the middle. You're either good or evil. All right. You mean about yourself? My opinions of things. And so I think that actually that can be translated into many different areas in uh, my life. One of the bad ways is if somebody slights me, I see them as evil and it's like, that's it. See a piece. Like we're done. So you know you're saying I mean? even if you're in a different mental state a year later, you have, you've casted this person as bad. I've cast them as bad, and it's going to take a lot for me to get back into there. Is there you know? some work that, you're, that you think you'll have to do of trying to recalibrate your, the reality of who people are to you? Well, I mean, I think in all of it, it's just, it's just kind of I'm learning that there's a self-dialogue that's going on that takes you into these negative behavioral patterns. And the self-dialogue is what... I need to get good at before I emotionally respond or before I respond in a negative fashion. Yeah, it's, it's responding of not reacting. Yeah, it's like I need to take a moment and take a breath and think about this and be like, okay, wait, no, people aren't perfect. Like just because they said this one thing to me, it doesn't mean that it was directed at me being a bad person or they're not sliding me it was just a pulling teeth joke it wasn't that big of a deal 100 percent. but they're not like you're not interrupting me because you fucking are tell me in a second missing we'll right me <laughs> bts baby <laughs> like that shit right there <laughs> that, that shit right there that, that really fucking well i mean it could if somebody, if me and you were in a relationship and I wasn't sure if I was doing comedy and, and you fucking interrupted me and I'm like, what the fuck? I was just talking mm-hmm. like that shit could drive me bananas and I would hold it and it would harbor resentment because I interpret that as you dissing me. And so when you diss me and I feel hurt because I don't have a great sense of self, like my center now i'm like oh i go into major fighting mode and that's when i'll turn around and as my defense mechanism i'll say fuck off did you fuck the fuck off get the fuck out of here i never want to talk to you again you had an issue with uh, an issue with blake that was similar to this wasn't it (laughs) what didn't you and blake when you guys first met me and durs oh i thought it was blake no me and durs blake and i've been boys since i'm sure blake and i have had multiple over our but the dvd one was durs that was durs that was Durs. Durs sliding me and me taking it personal and me. It was. We, we, we talked about the last podcast, but give me a thirty a second fucking, version. It's a it's a classic Hollywood boys story. C H B S. Yeah, where he was. I didn't know who he was. He was Adam's friend. We had a party at our house. Our neighbors upstairs were kicking him out because he was being a drunk asshole. I was asleep on the couch. They come down. I hear shouting like, "Get out of the house!" I wake up. I am like, get the fuck out. You're talking to my friends. That is friends are representing of my house. Get the fuck out of here. And he grabs a couple DVDs off the off the <laughs> the rest of development and Jamie Foxx stand-up DVD. And I say, you can't take those. Those are Adam's friends DVDs. And he says, I'm Adam's friend. And I say, oh, you still gotta get the fuck <laughs> out of here. But for me, like like that rage that like bubble that like fucking real like argh, like that is something that i've channeled into a comedic area with people who know that i like to joke about it but it comes from a real place yeah i i i could say i've never seen it in you except for one time 
Oh. And it was very subtle. Oh. And the one time I saw it was just now. Or, oh. oh. I don't know if that was you, like, living it for, for the explanation, but um, I, I did uh, the, the cut to the, the like, the, the joke to me was a bad time to cut. And I did it once, and then you laughed. Right. So then, I don't know, it was maybe a minute and a half later, I, I, another time, I was just trying to heighten the joke. I did it, uh, cutting you off on purpose, and you said, like, that right there. And I'm like... Oh, yeah, I thought we were on the same page. That was the joke we just did. So that, I, yeah. Were you just really upset when I did it? Well, that was, I think that was me trying to not really, like, hide it. But, like, yeah. Like, because I had to take myself out of the joking area. I joked in a moment that you were being serious and that contradicted the energy. Also, I felt to answer your question, I might as well be like, look, we're not joking right now. Like, let me show you what this actually might be if you and I had a little bit of a, a feathers ruffling moment mm. like let me just show you what it what it might be if i'm not performing and the cameras are not yeah, around it's the me. only time and it was nothing i mean you were just explaining no something but i mean that is a real that is real that's a right. real thing that 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 a real reaction of the my interpretation of dismissive behavior towards me so what bothers you isn't the timing. What bothers you is my in, your assumption of my intention. Right. Like you think. Like that's a funny time to cut somebody off. You're over there going for a joke. That's funny. But if I really was trying to get a point across and you kept interrupting me, I would, without cognitive behavioral therapy or dialectical behavioral therapy, I will go off and maybe get quiet and maybe just like fucking turn off and maybe get the fuck out of here. And then probably we might not ever have that conversation again. I've had, uh, uh, especially earlier on, when I say younger, I don't mean that. I mean, still like even as, as, as recently as late 20s, but not as much, if at all anymore. But I have had numerous experiences in my life uh, where I have the other person went quiet and or whatever the thing was and i had no i didn't pick up on that they something happened and they leave and i they don't ever and, and i have no i have no idea that they're mad upset what could they be mad of we're both on the same page with the snaps well that's where that's where like you being autistic and having you know being on the spectrum is kind of a very pure it's a very pure being because you're you're like seemingly unaware you're very in touch with kind of what you're trying to do and who you are and like that's where it ends you know yeah, what i yeah. mean yeah and and with the the being so in touch and present with that uh uh if like you were building a character i always think of this and like you know strength speed how good their their, their dunking is or whatever <laughs> right, right, right. as i go from being able to be present and 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 do jokes or whatever the version of that for me it's jokes but play i'll yeah, say yeah um and know what my intentions are as this gets higher i feel at least for me the awareness of what the other person is thinking and how they're feeling gets lower so i also c c really connected with you when you said that you didn't want to speak too much on borderline personality disorder because you don't want to be an advocate for it yeah i mean basically the only thing that i kind of am down to chat about is not the framing this disorder as a disorder like that's the only thing that i'm like really like look we have to kind of repaint yeah how we look at these things it because it's, it's not a bad thing it's just a category and that category i got placed in that category by by things beyond my control like i didn't i didn't like when i was like two years old be like oh i want to have this type of a relationship with the adults in my life with which then like forces me into this category, it just fucking happened. Like it just happened. And this is where I landed. I didn't choose to have the genes go <laughs> and make whatever the, the little combo is that then makes my brain get aggressive in situations. I did not choose that, but I have been living with it for quite some time, not knowing it. And now that I do know does that make me different? No, not at all. It makes me me. It's, I'm still me. And anybody out there who might have something like this, 
I want them to know that it does not change them. Yeah. It does not. You it don't just have give to, them a rule book. You do not have to lean into it. You just got. You just found a category, yeah. man. That's it. Found a category for a very small part of your life. When I got my diagnosis, I didn't feel like, oh no, now something's different. It's I've I've been the way I am my whole life. It's just now I better understand certain patterns of behavior that I didn't recognize. Yeah, and you can figure out like maybe why certain things rub you wrong, and you get in fights with those people that you love. You know, yeah. like. Like for me, I was like, oh my God, all these past like 10 years of my relationship during the hard times, I now see kind of why this is occurring. And if I know why, then I can alter and I can like change and I can choose to react, you know? There was uh, something that I read um, before meeting with a professional behavioralist which was um, not only uh, getting a diagnosis and learning more about it, could it help me communicate with other people? It could help me help them communicate better with me. Right. And uh, that was a big, uh, reading that, I didn't think anything, I wasn't feeling emotional, not just watery eyes, I mean crying. Yeah. Like how amazing that would be. And, and there have been tools I've learned to say, like, I, 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 that may be more intuitive for people, but like even something as simple as, um, how are you on time? Because to me, if I'm okay on time, you're okay on time. Right. But I now know, even though I still feel like Kyle's okay, I've, I, I now know here's a tool. Um, and for me to be able to tell someone beforehand, I used to talk about this on the podcast, but I've been with Betty, thank goodness, for over a year now, so it hasn't come up. But it, I'm remembering when I would be going on dates with people, I found it was easy, especially for smoking weed, to easy to say to them directly, hey, uh, sometimes I get heavy into bit mode yeah. and uh, you might end up being annoyed or uncomfortable or it's too much. I probably won't pick up on it. I, I'm asking you to give me the benefit of the doubt. If you ever think it's too much, just tell me one time, Rick, it's too much. You'll have to tell me that and then I'll stop. Or if I don't, just leave. Yeah. You know, but, but being able to tell people, it's, it's about mitigating expectations. And if people are expecting one thing and they get something else, it might shock them. But if you let them know beforehand, hey, you're going to have to take your shoes off before you come in. Right. They're not going to be as upset. Right. So just learning your things. And, and right now, I now know. I mean, there were two other snap moments I didn't go to, by the way. <laughs> to, to interrupt, <laughs> interrupt snap bits. But like to know, oh, K Kyle might feel that some, he might misinterpret this as a slight. So make sure I am more clear by if I do something and I see you getting quiet, I could be, oh, by the way, when I did this, this is what I meant. I'm sorry if, you know what I'm saying? 100%, man. And I mean, you and I are in a different playing field right now because we are in joke world. And like- You're saying us as comedians. Us together right now. I mean, you know, like we have to be open to jokes and that's how we kind of use it. But this is beneficial in everyday life because everyday life, you can't joke your way out of everything. You can't like, I mean, you kind of can. But. I, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I, no, I, I am being serious. But you, you, you go on. Yeah, you, 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 you can use it as like a tool. But I right. don't know, man. It's good to know. Like if somebody near you has something, it's like you don't want to be like, oh, they have something. I'm never going to be able to communicate with them. All you have to do is be like, how do you like to be communicated with? Like, That's what's it. up? Yeah. What's the deal? Like, okay, I've noticed that this kind of rubs you the wrong way now. Is this something that's real? And like direct, honest communication is, is always good. It's, it's, it's oftentimes, I find, more than good. It's necessary. It is. Because you might miss it. You Very much so. Everybody's yeah. got all these thoughts floating on in their brain. Like if you're direct and honest, baby, and we got ourselves a good world. If you're direct and you're honest... Baby, we got ourselves a good world. That's Kyle Newichek <laughs> on Take Your Shoes Off podcast. Although that's a great ending, I do want to say one more thing. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah I yeah. felt that was the ending, but I want to say this. The point of letting people communicate with you direct and honest, there's something really important for you, uh, borderline personality disorder, among many other things, um, just experiences of your life. But we have a responsibility to know how we are best spoken to but also how we're received and when you know you find this in relationships it's just what chemistry is but there is a, an efficiency to when you meet somebody new or if you never built a chemistry for whatever reason 
to be able to know yourself well enough to say, hey, this is the way I need, I like to be spoken to. And will you please tell me the same? I have learned that not a lot of people are in touch with necessarily what they need, what their boundaries are. So finding out how you like to be spoken to, communicating that to somebody else is the easy part. The hard part is understanding what your triggers are and what your boundaries are and what you're comfortable with. So I, I don't know, I, I guess what I'm, I am feeling insecure now because when no, I'm no. giving a lesson, but I mean like, well, the thing I can kind of pile onto that because I, I did hear like people say when, when people are in their thirties, that's when these disorders start to pop up and it's like motherfucker, they're not popping up. We've just lived long enough to understand that there's issues. They've been there yeah. for quite some time. And now we're just like, we have had enough experience on this planet to be like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> They're not popping up. They're not a fucking disease. Yeah. They're long winded grooves that have been formed. And now we're just people like you and I, who are going to therapy and trying to figure it out. We're strong enough to go, what's up with me? And then now that I know it, I can communicate that to you. Uh, all right, man. Well, this was fun. Yeah, it was dope. Yeah, man. Thank you. It was uh, fantastic seeing you again. Uh, awesome hanging with you as always, dog. You're my homie. Where could people find you? Find me? Yeah, like uh, if they were looking for you online. Oh, yeah. Well, you can find me on Insta. I'm on IG just about every morning showing off the farm. What's your Instagram handle? Kyle Newichek. Kyle Newichek. That's my name. Don't wear it out. Okay. <laughs> your dick is out. What's up? Your dick is out. Right. I know. All right. Well, I had a good time. I thought with you. you said. I thought. <laughs> I thought you said you need to take a picture with me. Oh, sure. Oh, okay. Great. <laughs> Cue music. Scoop down. Scoop down. Oh yeah. I don't know what the fourth uh, line is.